greetings, greetings. What is with people? They can never stay disciplined to stay on one thing. They find themselves jumping from one thing to the next. Lack of discipline is what causes you to be jumpy. Instead of digesting the information as you're receiving it, step by step, they want to run ahead. They want to run to the side. They want to run all different places instead of digesting the information that is given because it is given in a way to help progress step by step. What I've noticed as I travel is that people tend to lack serious discipline in their life. If that's a major problem, whether, whether they see it or not, or don't realize it or not, lack of discipline leads to incomplete work, incomplete information. It takes years sometimes to digest certain amount of information and then not just digest it, apply it and practice it in your life. But because people lack discipline, this is what leads to this erratic, jumpy behavior. And I've noticed this for a long time now through the classes I teach, just through the questions I receive. They think they're doing the work of what is presented to them, but in actuality, they're not. They're impatient, they're jumpy, and they run ahead, and they start adding all this different information. And because they start adding all this different information, they have a great possibility to confuse themselves. And then they're going to present their confusion to me. For me to answer the questions that they caused the confusion upon themselves. When I've always told people, be disciplined and work as it is given. Be patient. Stop running ahead. I don't care if you've been walking 15 years on whatever path. As information is presented, as you walk in a certain current, you should discipline yourself to just that current for at least six months to a year before you start doing the jumpy, jumpy, hokey, hokey, pokey. It really is disgusting. What else is disgusting is people's perceptions and points of view. Much of our perception is skewed by the programming of this social construct we were raised in. We view life from a narrow-minded point of view. We swear that we're conscious. We swear that we're becoming more aware. But the problem is, as I've noticed, when I was in the conscious community and left that years ago, is that it tends to lead to even more narrow-minded views. People are in an uproar. Everything they see is conspiracy theory. They're trying to destroy us, trying to kill us. I don't get wrapped up in that because what I realize is through working with the Klipoth, the tree of Klipoth, through working with the draconian current, through working with the darker forces, darker energies, if you really discipline yourself and work and worked and worked, receive results, then you've already experienced Citra Ara or Ahra, which is the other side. You've already seen the other side, so you already know what's going to happen before it happens many times. You already see what's the results and the end game of this virus or pandemic. You already see all that, and your point of view is different. People get wrapped up in the new world order, the new world order, the new world order, as if it's the end of all existence, and it's not. If you know anything like I know, if you really study the principles of the New World Order, if you really study the principles of the Illuminati, 
if you really study the principles of Luciferianism, you would understand what are you afraid of? You would really understand what is taking place and not get wrapped up in the fever of paranoia. Afraid of your next move. Afraid of what's going to be done to you next. You work with the darker forces. You've worked with the Lord of Pestilence. You've worked with what it means to be poisoned. What it means to be poisoned from within. You know what it means. How you can transform through that poison. But see, people want to make excuses for their plot in life by blaming everything external because their shitty ass present life is a creation of their own mind. And thus, instead of taking responsibility as a true God demon would do, they rather blame other people for their existence, their misery in life, and their, and their crap that they really created to happen. So, what does that mean? That means people need to start really doing the work of deprogramming themselves. Many people claim that they're not programmed. Or that they've broken the program through consciousness. Through receiving certain amounts of knowledge. Yes and no. It will help you destroy certain programs. And enforce other programs. To really do the work of deprogramming. You have to do this work internally. Not just trying to deprogram what is external, but deprogram what has been programmed within you and what you've accepted and even what you've created within your own program. You have to look within yourself. Stop running from your shadow. Stop running from your darkness. Stop running from all these things and running to the mountains and the Himalayas and meditating Om Namah Shivaya as if Shiva's going to do all of this for you. Shiva's not going to do a goddamn thing for you because Shiva is a representation of what you can become. When you go against program structure of society, when you destroy all these things, it's not a sweet nice event it is a painful event mentally painful spiritually painful emotionally painful physically painful it is a painful event when you overcome your programming when you destroy it it's not peaches and cream there's no celebration there's none of that it is a solitary work most of the time, unless you're brave enough to enter certain temples that are designed for you to do the work of the shadow, to do the work of the darkness, bringing light into that darkness. If you're not brave enough for that, yes, then it will continue to be a solitary path. And in that solitary path, you're going to realize many things. One, you're full of shit. Two, you're full of shit. Three, you created the bullshit. Four, you're still living the bullshit. Five, you're still full of shit. If you waste your time on attacking everything outside of yourself, when the fuck are you working on yourself? If you blame everything outside of yourself for your present existence, when the fuck are you doing something to change your present existence? See, I love conspiracy theorists because, yes, partially they're giving you truth and the other part is a lot of hogwash bullshit. But here's what I don't like about conspiracy theorists. They never give you solutions for the bullshit of what's happening according to their conspiracy theory. Where's the solution, people? They don't give you solutions because they have none. Because many times these same people who are coming and giving you conspiracy theories and revealing conspiracies are very much still a part of that very conspiracy they're trying to so-called enlighten you by. Meaning, 
they're a part of the Illuminati still, or part of certain orders still, and they're just basically utilizing fear tactics to increase the fear and paranoia in people, but they're still very much a part of those orders or powers that be. And people suck that shit up and never think twice and never use their perception to think outside of what they normally perceive to realize the same people who are giving you that shit are the same people who are a part of that shit. But if you've worked this path, if you've gone and done the work of the shadow, work of the darkness, work with the demons, then you understand. You've been to the other side. You understand and sit back and say, that's right, bring the new world order on. Because I see and perceive it as a different way than the masses do. The cattle and the sheep, how they perceive the new world order. For those who've been to the side, they know the new world order is only going to empower those who work in the dark. It's only going to make you stronger and transform you to become more and more powerful than you could have ever imagined. You will not fear a virus. You will consume and devour the virus. You will not fear your enemies. You will consume and destroy your enemies and devour them too. You will not fear your own fear because you will consume and devour your own fear. If you're still making excuses and you're not working out, exercising during this time, and what f fuckery are you doing besides stuffing your face with junk food, becoming more obnoxiously retarded than ever before? Orvana, how do I face my shadow? First, you got to realize that you that you have issues and problems. Stop thinking that you're fucking holy roly because you took it on a new name to Hootie Rob Bay, and all of a sudden, that has cured you from the bullshit of the past. No, it hasn't. You just buried it for a little time, but it will surface again. You first have to realize you're full of shit. And when you realize you're full of shit, then you'll take the steps to start doing something about it, and you'll start doing shadow work. When you do magic, it'll be more high magic, where you'll be focusing on mastering yourself. Less so doing external magic like love spells, financial spells, things like that. Because you'll realize when I've worked on myself, mastered myself, those blackness of obstacles are gone. What, what can stop that flow of abundance prosperity coming to me? Because my condition, mind, my programming, my fear, my doubts is what stopped that from coming in the first place. So what do you do? Other than keep creating your bullshit over and over and allowing yourself to keep living in a self-created misery that you're presently in. Can you look at yourself in the mirror? You want a ritual? Look at yourself in the mirror in the dark with just a candlelight on. How long can you look at yourself in the mirror before you start being distracted, looking away? All these thoughts start consuming you and you just turn on the lights because you can't handle Hearing your bullshit rise to the surface. That's the problem. If you feel like you still got to debate people in this day and time, you're a goddamn fool. If anything you should be doing is stop debating people and start fucking fixing yourself. Because if you feel you got to debate somebody, your ego is out of order. And I ain't talking about the empowering ego. I'm talking about the false ego that we create, these illusions of who we are, what we think we are, how we're original, how we're this, we're this, we're that. Cut that shit out. Cut it out, people. Because at the end of the day, you either are the predator or the prey. I devour and consume my enemies internally and externally. I devour and consume all things that try to attack me and hurt me externally and internally. And I will devour and consume anything 
that comes at me and my family. You should have that same mentality too. Stop thinking like a damn wuss and be afraid to be the predator. Stop being afraid to devour shit that you are under attack from. Particularly your weak mind, your weaknesses. Start attacking and destroying that because that is what is controlling you and keep making you weaker. It keeps making you weaker. But you don't want to face yourself because you rather live in illusion and stuff your fat ass. Oh, Ravana, that's not body positive. I don't give a fuck about body positive. I don't give a fuck about none of that. What I give a fuck about is you empower yourself. And when you empower yourself, you'll take the steps to be healthy, regardless what your body type is. Not caught up in that bullshit of this new program mentality. Everything is body positive. Don't body shame no one. It's not no one's body shaming. What I'm shaming is the fucking mentality you have where you got to stuff your face and then make excuses for what is happening to your body. You could be sick. You could be so-called big girl. But if you take your take care of yourself, eat healthy, then glorify your thickness. Glorify that shit. But if you just make an excuse and use the body positive image to keep stuff in your face and only get bigger because I'm not going to I'm I'm going to be positive even though my body's getting bigger than you just a gluttonous fool, you need to check yourself before you become even more unhealthy, obese and end up with serious heart conditions diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure, and put yourself on the verge of death. See, I'm not in this politically correct bullshit that we've been programmed to do. I'm going to call the shit like I see it, whether you like the shit or not. Take care of your motherfucking health. That's the day and time when you take care of your health and be real about your bullshit. People don't want to do that. They'd rather play games with themselves, lie to themselves, make up things, ignore the reality of their fucked up inside. They'd rather run from facing Lilith because Lilith will expose all your bull crap. Lilith is not just a sexual goddess like many people think. Oh, Lilith, I'm going to be like Lilith, not like Eve. And all they're doing is getting consumed by their overdrive, their sexual hunger, and their borderline nymphomaniac ways. That's not Lilith. It's part of Lilith. Lilith is of a very destructive force and energy. Lilith is a force that will literally suck you dry until you face your bullshit. She will reveal the bullshit you hide. Her sister Naama does the same thing. But her sister Naama is like, oh, you won't face your bullshit. I'll let your own demons devour you and destroy you. See, many people work with the demons. Or they work with these dark gods, the draconian gods. But they work with them sometimes in an external way to worship, to grovel, to do these things still. They don't realize that the true work, the true high magic is utilizing the energy, the current of the draconian gods, embodying that energy to use it to destroy the shit within you, to rise up the shit within you that you failed to face or deal with. We use that energy to take our weaknesses, identify them, and transform into strengths. But at the same time, working with the draconian current, working with the draconian gods, the dark gods, it does something else. It opens a dialogue and communication. It opens a relationship that if need be, you can also take that energy that's transformed you that connection you have and you could unleash it to destroy those who come against you. 
You can unleash it into this world to keep open avenues for you, but you're doing it in a different way. That's the purpose. That's the main purpose of the left hand path. It's always been about self deification, not this false self deification because I think I have a thousand books under my belt and I'm so deep and profound. You can have a thousand books under your belt, but if you have not applied what you've learned and practiced what you've learned in a real setting, in reality, in ritual work, and gaining, gaining and benefiting from it, then you have information that in time will become useless because you're not using it to transform yourself. You just want to sound deep. The overbearing ego consumes you and you lose sight of the truth and you create this false identity. You become this false God who wants to be worshiped but doesn't even deserve to be worshiped because you're false. You're not true, bro. You're not true, sis. You're false. Because when you do the work of self deification, the true work of self deification, left hand path, you don't care to be glorified by anybody. What you do is glorify yourself and see the before and after, and you glorify yourself and you see the changes. You see that you don't react the same way to the same issues that have arised before, the same trigger points. You're not react in the same way that's when you know you've re received results that that's when you know you've empowered yourself and transformed yourself perception points of view instead of running from your demons fucking dance with your demons embrace your demons learn to love them fuckers because that is a part of you just like anything else but we fail to face that reality. If you are, for example, Bilal is one of the hardest draconian gods, dark gods to really make a connection with. Because Bilal is a warrior by nature and he doesn't like weak ass motherfuckers. He doesn't like these sissified people. But I like strong people, strong warriors, and you got to have a strong heart to deal with that shit. Because when you reach the abyss, death, when you reach the abyss of the tree of Klippa, you go into the underworld. The, you've already done the work in the underworld, the seven lower Klippa, the underworld. And when you reach death, you either have done the work to continue transforming to reach the Gnosis or receive the Gnosis of Bilal. Or you just get sent right back down further into the underworld to deal more with your shit that you're still not really working on. Because many people will be like, oh, I work with Bilal. I made contact with Bilal for props. For I'm so deep and profound. Oh, my God. Help me, brother. Help me, sister. You you work with Bilal. You've made contact. And what happens in time, it's, a, it's, it's an illusion that they've created. Because Bilal literally will rip you apart. Just fucking rip you apart. And, and then you're tasked with putting yourself back together. But people want to falsify their connection with Bilal. Or the connection with different demons. As if they're really doing the work of transformation. They're really just doing the work to sound, to be deep, to try to act deep like they're so profound. Oh my God, Bilal came to me and he told me that, that, listen, first of all, if Bilal came to me, I ain't telling none of you motherfucking shit. It's a personal experience, so why the hell am I sharing that on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, my personal experience that I had with Bilal? It's for your personal development. Your personal growth and personal transformation. So what Bilal shares with you is for you, not for the whole world to know. This is why the circle is tight. I keep the circle small and I share with those who are like mine within that circle. We walk the same path. 
Otherwise, I keep that shit private. People love to broadcast their spiritual work on Instagram and YouTube. Listen, you do what you want to do, but it's a personal, private path. It's not for the world to know. But you do what you choose to do. That lets me know when people feel like they got to bro- talk about it. They're still seeking validation. Or they're still seeking attention from other people. Those are attention whores. Or you seek validation because you lack your own self-confidence. And have a strong self-esteem. Stop that shit. Do the work of transformation. Keep it private unless you are within a group or circle that you feel you can really share that with. Because you don't know who's out there lurking. You don't know who's out there trying to pimp you. Like I said in my last video, I have people infiltrating my classes to go back and snitch to some of these occultists. You don't think I see y'all? I've been seeing y'all before you even came through. I just played like I was innocent. Like I was being duped. No, I wasn't. I saw you ass before you came. That's why I never really gave you enough information. Deeper information. It was basic shit. Because your snitching punk sissy ass goes running back to your fucking slave master. Please, people. I keep telling y'all, y'all trying the wrong person. But hey, that's alright. I'm going to just keep it quiet. You'll see what I mean by that. Do the work, people. That's really what it comes down to. Do the work and transform yourself from within. Stop jumping. Like goddamn little toads and frogs jumping from leaf to leaf, log to log. Remind me of that old game, Frogger, where you jump from log to log. That's what a lot of these people are that come... On this left hand path. They're dibblers and dabblers. They jump, jump, jump. And never master any one damn thing on the left hand path. The jittery ass people. Damn it dude. People. Stick to one thing. Master that shit. Give yourself six months to a year or so to master. One thing before you jump and jump and jump. It's a damn shame. I'm going to let y'all go. Because it's starting to rain like. Like extra hardcore out here I was going to record this video outside but as you see nature ain't with that today so just share this on YouTube we're going we're gonna to get this popping y'all if you want to get more in depth in this work if you want to be mentored in this work if you want to learn about Luciferianism if you want to learn about the Tree of Clipoth, the Draconian Gods hit Connect with me on Patreon. Become a member. We're going to work this. We're going to do this from inside and out. The people who are members on there, they can tell you there's a lot of content and a lot of information that will work in there. And now some of y'all are going to start doing presentations. Some of y'all are going to present what you've learned. We're going to do, I'm going to be interviewing y'all instead of y'all always interviewing me. We're going to have sisters presenting their work. I have Sister Dawn, We're going to, her poetry is going to be put on Patreon. I have another brother whose artwork is going to be on Patreon. We have other people who are video and film uh, students that they're going to put the work on there. We're going to be within the Eternal Black Flame on Patreon. We're going to have a community and we're going to connect and we're going to work this. Alright? So hit me up. I'm the Eternal Black Flame on Patreon. Infernal blessings to all.